Hey gang, a lot of Westerners that are traveling to the Philippines for a long-term stay, as well as a lot of Filipinos are curious. The question is, is the Philippines behind the USA in terms of technology? The simple answer to that is yes. I'll elaborate. First of all, in terms of cell phones and smartphones, the Philippines really isn't behind the USA in terms of that. The Philippines has a very big smartphone culture and they have all the latest stuff when it comes to that. However, in terms of other forms of technology and culture, that's where you see a big difference. TV. In the United States, at this point, most people seem to have HD TVs, and it seems like just about every legitimate channel has an HD broadcast. In the Philippines, if you walk through the mall, you'll see all the latest, really fantastic HD TVs for sale. However, there's a big price difference between that and what you could buy a comparable television for in the United States. TVs here are far more expensive. And then what if you can afford those and you want to bring it home and you want to watch your favorite Filipino TV shows in HD with your great new TV? Well, guess what? Your SOL, your stuff is out of luck because GMA, ABS, they don't broadcast in HD. The local television studios are very far behind technology-wise and thinking-wise. And they don't broadcast in HD, they have HD cameras, they don't shoot in HD, and I was told even when they edit it and output it, they output at an even lower resolution. And I asked someone that explained that to me, well, what about in the future when everyone in the Philippines does have HD TVs, aren't they gonna wanna show the highest quality version of that available? And they said, well, they're not thinking ahead to the future. They, they think that most of the shows they produce anyways aren't that important and they're not going to have much of a shelf life. Speaking of the media companies, in terms of YouTube, they're very far behind what's going on in terms of that. In the United States, YouTube has become a very alternative form of entertainment and just another legitimate media outlet. And that scares the big media companies because it's taking viewership away from their television shows and it's giving power to the little guy. These, these big money companies don't have the same power and influence and control over people that they used to because now you can see some kid in Nebraska putting his point of view into the world. And that is going to influence people. And if they're watching these people, they're not watching the big shows that they're putting on. However, in terms of the Philippines, they have a very different way of thinking. The YouTube culture, probably because in general, internet speeds here are much slower than in the United States. This YouTube culture hasn't quite entered the, the mainstream yet. It's getting there. It's catching up to the, the culture of the United States in terms of that but the major media companies still have a stranglehold over people and the viewership and their power and influence and they don't really see it as a threat yet. But the point is, in terms of that type of culture, it hasn't taken off yet. Speaking of the cost of things, the Philippines has a reputation of being a very low cost place to live. Now some things here, many things are very cheap compared to America. And what those things are generally is things involving human labor. For instance, if you want to get a massage or get a haircut in the Philippines, it's going to cost you a fraction of what it's going to cost you in the United States. But if you actually want to buy things, many of those are going to cost more, especially electronics. The Philippines is not the place you want to buy electronics. Laptops, if you need a new laptop, a, a decent laptop is going to cost you maybe twice as much as what it's going to cost you in the United States for the same thing. And if you go into the stores and look at laptops here, most of those are about two years behind in terms of specs. Not only is the computer going to cost you more money, but guess what? There's an extra catch here. It doesn't come with an operating system. That's going to cost you roughly $100 or $120 extra. Another example of things costing more. The camera that I'm shooting this with. I needed a new camera because my old one broke. I found one online in the United States on sale, $300. I had it shipped to a friend in the United States that was gonna visit, and when they came over, they gave it to me. This same camera, if I was gonna walk into a store in the Philippines, costs about $1,200, four times the price. 
Aside from the affordability of technology, there's another big difference in terms of culture. A big difference is no Amazon.com or anything like that in the Philippines. They have a few sites where they sell things, but they're like bad versions of Craigslist. They have a Filipino version of eBay, but eBay is not as important as they once were. And the Filipino eBay doesn't compare to the American eBay. But Amazon.com in the United States is a great way to get cheap DVDs, books, things like that. Here in the Philippines, if you want to buy a book, you have to walk into the bookstore and pay whatever they want you to pay. You have to pay full price. In America, that went out a few years ago. Once you get used to buying on Amazon, you won't go back. You'd find that outrageous to have to pay full price for a book or DVD when you can get it so cheap off of that. I have to wonder if some of these big companies like the bookstores are responsible for keeping Amazon and things like that out of the Philippines. Now even though there's these big differences in terms of the price of technology and the culture of the technology and the way of thinking, that's not always necessarily a bad thing. I'm of the mindset that technology doesn't necessarily make your life easier. It often complicates things even more. For instance, I haven't owned a cell phone in years, and to be honest with you, I don't really miss it, and sometimes I'll be out to dinner with someone and they'll be on their cell phone, and it just annoys me. At least I'm not annoying people that way. I do spend a lot of time on my laptop, on the internet, but sometimes I'm forced to go out and shoot all day long, or to be at an event where it forces me to get away from the cyber world, and it's a nice break when I can just relax my mind, do other things, a lot of my worries and tension go away as a result of not being glued to the internet. The old world where media was actually harder to come by and more expensive wasn't necessarily all that bad. It kind of made you appreciate things and cherish them. I remember back in the 80s and 90s, if you had a VHS tape, it was something special that you really appreciated and you collected VHS tapes. Now if I hand one of my DVDs to someone and say, here's a gift for you, watch it. It's almost like handing them garbage. They're never going to watch it. They don't really care. They don't want to go through the trouble of taking something physical and putting it in the DVD player. It's too much work. People just want to press a button and have whatever they want to see, whatever they're in the mood for, pop up instantly as if it's magic. Now keep in mind if you're a rich person, you're not going to have a problem. Or if you're not all that interested in most of this technology these days anyways, it doesn't really matter. That's not for you. This is just meant to be kind of an interesting comparison. But what do you guys think? I appreciate your comments and I hope you enjoy all my videos. Leave me some comments and let me know what you think.